Why did this happen? Um, my fourth Manic episode happened in December of 2013. And for those of you who watched the previous videos, I shared about my three previous Manic episodes. Um, I'll just do a quick recap. So my first one happened in New Zealand in 2000. My second one happened in Vancouver in 2007 March and my third one happened in May of 2007 in Calgary. So at the end of my uh, or when I was released from the psychiatric hospital in Calgary in May of 2007 I was seeing a psychiatrist um, every month and then it weaned to every three months and I was right at the hospital and that was actually really good having that consistent support from a psychiatrist. I was uh, taking medication um, called Zyprexa and I was on the waiting list for the bipolar clinic. And about a, a year after my third manic episode, I got told that I got a spot in the bipolar clinic. And that's at Foothills Hospital in Calgary. It's outpatient. So I'd go there every Monday morning, uh, or sorry, I'd go there for Monday morning appointments. And that was about every two or three months. So I'd meet with a nurse for half an hour and a psychiatrist for 15 minutes. And overall, that was really good. So, you know, from 2007 to 2009, I was taking my meds and going to the bipolar clinic and overall things were seeming pretty good. Um, with the medication I was on, I didn't have the side effects that I did with lithium from 2000 to 2006. And then in 2009, I took a personal development course and uh, a few other courses and met a number of amazing people. And one of the people I met we were on a lunch break and I was taking my medication and uh, he asked me, what are you taking that for? And I said, oh, it's for bipolar disorder. And I was a little embarrassed to tell him that. And he said, oh, I have bipolar disorder too and I don't take meds. And that was a huge awakening for me. Um, I'd never heard or met anyone before that had bipolar disorder that was medication free. So to make a long story short, between 2009, 2013, uh, I did a, a, a lot of courses, I saw a lot of professional and non-traditional medical people, um, I did a lot of research on my own, and in 2010 I made the decision to move from Calgary to Canmore, so I sold my place in Canmore, left the corporate world, and in August of 2010 um, I was on a very low dose of Zyprexa, and I made the decision to, to stop my medication. By that point, I had built a lot of habits into my life. I had radically improved my diet. I had uh, learned and consistently used different tools to be more mentally stable. And um, when I met with a doctor in Canmore, I was actually very nervous to find a new doctor. So I was fully honest and I said, I have bipolar disorder and I'm not taking medication. And uh, he asked me, well, what are you doing uh, instead of medication? So I told him the different things, told him the courses I've taken, and he said, you know, in his mind, it's his belief that not everyone with a mental illness needs to have daily psychiatric medication. So that was uh, huge. So he was fully supportive of me. And, you know, so I went uh, one year, two year, three years off medication, no side effects. Um, of course, sorry. <laughs> um, no big manic episodes, no big depressive episodes. And overall life was good. And uh, December of 2013, I was living in Canmore and I went hypomanic. And, you know, looking back, I didn't have the tools that I do now to alleviate the hypomanic. And for those of you who are not familiar with hypomania, it's when someone is extremely confident, extremely energetic, um, very charismatic, very confident. Um, they tend to be th the life of the party and uh, it's an incredible state to be in. So when I've been in a hypomanic state, it's extremely hard to tell myself to do things to get out of that state. Um, who doesn't want to be super energetic, confident and uh, the life of the party, right? So in December 2013, um, Fortunately, I had the mindset to know that, okay, I didn't have the tools to alleviate it and I didn't have meds to stop it, but I actually did have the mindset to call the ambulance. And I know for some of you out there that might sound strange to call an ambulance for a mental health issue, 
but personally for me now I actually think it's it's very good um, because bottom line is they transferred me to Canmore um, Canmore Hospital I should say I got uh, screened and checked out there they then transported me to Calgary and I stayed at uh, Rocky View Hospital and it's interesting because when I think of people with physical ailments, it's not a big deal for them to have an ambulance. You know, it's a heart, whether it's a heart attack or, you know, a major injury or what have you. Um, but there still is this stigma that if someone has a, a mental health issue, that going by ambulance is a weird thing. And, uh, you know, personally, I don't think that at all. So anyways, I got to Rocky View and uh, they knew I was not on medication. I specifically told them that I don't desire to be on medication. And uh, what I did is the first morning I woke up at the hospital in Calgary at Rocky View. I made a list of all the things I had to do to improve my mindset, to improve my health while in the hospital, like things to do, people to avoid, uh, things to not do, like for example, not to hover around the nursing station and consistently ask them and do th ask them to do things for me, etc. And to go to as many sessions and, and therapy sessions as possible, etc., and um, and also to avoid pe certain people um, in psych wards. There are people that are extremely draining, and those are other people that uh, are doing their best to get well. And it hurts me to say this. Uh, this is coming from a space of love and support, but some of those people do not have a desire to get out of the hospital. And I, I know that sounds strange to some of you. But in my experience, I've been, I've been in the psych ward four times. And when I was in university, I used to work in a psych ward uh, for short-term people. And I consistently would see this. There would be a certain percentage of people in the psych ward that had a big desire to get on and get out and get on with their lives. And there'd be an equally amount, if not larger percentage of people that were just happy to, to not have responsibilities and didn't have a desire to go on with their life and uh, you know it hurts me to say that but that's the truth so when I was in Rocky View in December 2013 I, I have a pretty good sense of who's there to get better and who's there to hang out so the people that are there to hang out I, I did my best to really distance myself from them not really interact with them too much and the people who are there to get better those are the people that I really gravitated towards and and had conversations with and we and sure enough we were the ones in in all the sessions and art therapy and recreation therapy together so um, fortunately I was only in Rocky View for three and a half days and that's an extremely short amount of time for any of you familiar with uh, manic states there's very few times when someone is in a hospital for less than a week and uh, I'm, I'm very happy and a little bit proud to say that I was only in there for three and a half days. And the reason why is all the proactive things I was doing to get better. And as I, as I said, going as many sessions as I could, avoiding certain people, uh, doing my best to help out staff and also not make their job any more difficult. And I was not on any medication during that time. And that actually surprises me, even saying it now, because as soon as I had that manic episode in December 2013, I had this sense that I would be on medication again and there would be no alternative for me. And I basically said to myself, okay, if that's how it is, that's how it is. I, I don't have a desire to be in the psych ward anymore. And essentially, I had people, or sorry, um, the exit interview with a psychiatrist was, was very, very surprising and enlightening for me. Because up to that point in time, I had told myself that all a psychiatrist wanted to do was talk a little bit and then give you meds, or talk a little bit and adjust your meds, or talk a little bit and give you another med. That was the impression I had of, a, of psychiatrists, and that was my experience with psychiatrists. Um, so I will share a short story. Um, when I was going to the bipolar clinic, as I mentioned earlier in the video, that was on Monday morning, those appointments so it was every couple months or so and I remember one Monday I got to the appointment and I'd had a really busy weekend being active so I'd done a bunch of hiking and mountain biking and I showed up there Monday 8 30 in the morning and I was legitimately tired and I'm not someone that ingests caffeine I don't drink coffee or have caffeinated teas uh, caffeine really affects me so I came to this point and I was yawning I was tired 
So the nurse asked me, oh, why are you tired? Are you having trouble sleeping? I said, no, no, I'm just, I had a really busy weekend and, and uh, I'm gonna have a good sleep tonight and I'll be back to normal. So she was understanding and supportive. Psychiatrist walks in, he sees me yawn, and can you guess what his first question was? His first question was, do you need a sleeping pill? So I gotta admit, I looked at him, he was drinking his coffee, and I said to him, well, uh, no, I don't need a sleeping pill. I, I had uh, a really busy weekend being active. I'm just physically tired. So I asked him, I said, well, are you drinking the coffee because you like the taste or are you drinking the coffee because you need the caffeine? And he kind of gave me a bit of a, a glare. He said, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, I'm tired, but I don't drink coffee and I haven't had any caffeine today. So if I did have a coffee, I probably wouldn't be yawning right now. And he gave me a death glare. And it wasn't for me to make him feel bad, but it was for, for him to kind of reflect on himself and to say, okay, if he didn't have that coffee, he'd be yawning just like me. And I don't know what he did on his weekend, but um, it's like, no, I didn't want a sleeping pill. So, so back to the psych ward in December, 2013. So the exit interview of the psychiatrist, so she told me, she said, okay, you haven't been on medication the whole time here. Um, I am going to give you a sleeping pill medication, PRN, which means if and only if required, so not daily. And she told me that if she put me back on medication, she felt I'd go backwards. So that was a really, really big surprise. And that was also a really big pat on the back for me because I knew that at that point, everything I was doing to be mentally stable was working. And yes, I had this hiccup, I had another manic episode However, it was a very quick episode and I got out of it and back to stability very quickly. So um, I feel that that fourth manic episode happened for me to really research even more and learn and consistently use tools to alleviate and stop hypomania. So I'm at the point now where I've learned uh, different things and as soon as my mind is not shutting off, I'm having trouble sleeping, there's different things I do so that my hypomania subsides and that I return to more stable uh, mental health. And uh, on the flip side, I've also researched and consistently used different tools for when I'm feeling low, slightly depressed, to get back to feeling good and better again. So um, I know this was a bit of a longer video, so I do thank you for watching and um, stay tuned. I'll be doing a couple more videos in the next few days as part of Mental Health Week. And once again, if there's anyone you know that has bipolar disorder, consider sharing this video with them. A lot of people with that diagnosis feel alone, as did I, the first nine years or so. And um, I'd appreciate any reactions or comments. Thanks for watching live, those of you who are here live, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.